Could success actually be killing you? Well, I want to talk about my client, Brad, and how he ended up in the hospital in his early 30s getting a pacemaker because he wouldn't stop pushing into the tension. Now, I know that's a little contrary to what I usually say, stepping into tension is powerful, but we're going to talk about the bad side of that, the opposite side of that. Now, before we do, we're going to dive right into it, but before we do, I want to ask you to subscribe, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, to like the video and hit that bell notification. Now, let's dive right in. Do you push a lot? Do you step into a lot of tension? Do you go for it? And is it fun? Are you having fun with the tension? Are you growing from the tension? Are you learning from the tension? Are you walling off and just pushing, pushing, pushing? Do you step into the tension because you have to? Do you step into the tension because you kind of force it? I'm going to make it happen. Or is there a sense of aliveness that comes from stepping into tension? Well, we're going to talk about the difference between these two types of energy. When you get the aliveness, when you feel alive, when your body grows, and the energy that doesn't. But before I do, I want to tell the story of Brad. Now, Brad is a client of mine. He has become a good friend of mine. And he came to me originally for dating. And for a lot of you that are stepping into a lot of tension around dating, you're going to start to understand what I'm talking about here. This also applies to money and success because you're going to see how Brad applied it to his, uh, his life and business. Now, he came to me, he had already been stepping into a lot of tension. He got the, the idea that if he worked 80 hours a week and push, 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 he would become uh, super successful. He wanted the whole world to see him be successful. He wanted to prove to everybody he was good enough. So he was willing to work 80 hours a week. He'd get up, uh, he'd be the first one up. He would do all the hard work in the business that he created. He got a few business partners, but he started it. And he did whatever he had to do. He'd sleep in his car. It didn't matter. He would talk about there were days he would pass out on his bed and uh, at, when he got home and just and he wouldn't even know what happened. He'd be gone. And the next morning he's back up doing it again. Now, does this sound familiar? Do any of you have an experience like this? If any of you are having an experience like this, whether it's with money, success, dating, I don't care what it is in your life, even fitness or something like that, definitely write it down in the comments. I want to hear what it is. Now, what Brad did from there was he ended up building two businesses. One of them, the last one, was in the solar industry. And he built both of them up to multiple seven-figure businesses. But you know what? He never made any money on either one. In both cases, his business partner ended up holding the money hostage. Now, does this sound like a coincidence? Here he is. He's the workhorse. He's doing all the hard work. He's working 80 hours a week. He builds two businesses. All the money's held hostage. He's not getting paid anything. And here he is broke again struggling to get by and he was ready to do it again he was talking to me and he said he said i got a new business idea i'm going to get into commercial real estate redevelop these hotels i got them already lined up i know what i'm going to do and i could see that little mental race again that push i'm going to force it i'm going to make it happen i'm going to drive in there now i had found out he already had a pacemaker and uh and he had gotten it shortly after the second business uh kind of fell flat on him and I looked at him and I said, you really need to stop. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, you need a period of stopping. And he said, well, what are you talking about? He says, no, I need to go out and work. I need to hustle. I need money. And I said, no, you need your health, man. You're going to kill yourself. Now, he hadn't put the pacemaker together with the stress yet. He hadn't seen how the two were correlated. And so I had to share with him a simple principle. And then I'm going to come back to this stopping principle or what Zan Perion would call the great renunciation. You see, I had a huge stopping period myself. Zan had a hu uh, huge stopping period. I think everybody that becomes really successful reaches these stopping periods where there's a huge change in their life. And this has, and the reason for these stopping periods is to change your relationship to the tension in your life. Because if the tension in your life sucks, it is going to destroy your body. Let me show you how I know this. There was a really good study by a woman named Kelly McGonigal. And uh, she actually didn't do the study. She gave, uh, she did a TED talk on the study, excuse me. The study studied uh, 30,000 people over eight years and asked them if they had low stress, medium stress, or high stress. Asked them if the stress was good for them or bad for them in their internal opinion, the way they saw it. Two groups at the end of the eight years stood out. The group that said they had a lot of stress, but the stress was bad for them and the group that said they had a lot of stress, but the stress was good for them. So what they saw at the end of the eight years was the group that had a lot of stress, but the stress was bad for them, had the most illnesses, the most death, the most failures. Their lives were falling apart. And you would think, oh my God, see, stress is bad for you. But then they also noticed that the group that had a lot of stress, but the stress was good for them, 
They thought the stress was good for them, had the best success. They thrived on the stress. They grew on the stress. And I want you to think about the most successful people in the world that are famous. Um, people like uh, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, whether you love him or hate him, um, famous athletes like Kobe Bryant back in the day or Michael Jordan. If you look at these people, if you look at Arnold and Mike Tyson, I remember I got a video uh, that just came out on those two that is powerful. It talks about how they would get turned on in the stress. When you look at these types of people in the world, whether it's entrepreneurs or whether it's uh, business people or whether you're working on your dating, your relationship to the stress is everything. And what they noticed with this group that thought stress was good for them was that they were the most successful, the most healthy. They had uh, their lives took off. And so what the researchers realized was it wasn't stress that was the problem. It was the way you saw the stress. Now, if you understand my work in this area, I do a lot of coaching in this area and training in this area to change your relationship to stress, to get you out of burnout, to help you become more successful, whether it's dating, money, or otherwise I have clients in all these arenas. Um, but it's really about your emotional relationship to stress. When you are um, below the level of what we call courage, this vulnerable state, but it's a strong vulnerable state where you really enjoy the stress, uh, where, you, where the stress becomes, builds you and makes you feel alive and you're powerful in the face of it, that's the courage. When you're below that level, down in pride, anger, forcing, have to, need to, this, these lower emotions, you actually attack the body. The body kind of attacks itself. What they showed in that study, when they looked at these people and they started to look at their health at a deeper level, that when they were under stress because they had to do it, they were forcing it, they didn't like the stress, they thought the stress was bad for them, that their arteries would actually close off and they get less blood flow to the heart. Think about that, less blood flow to the heart. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the difference in a minute. And so it was damaging to their heart. Now think about my friend Brad, who's got the pacemaker, pretty wild, huh? Now I don't, I'm not a doctor, I, don't, I can't correlate these two, so don't, don't take this as medical advice, but I, you could see where that could be really bad for you. And you can probably feel that in your life. Think about in your life right now where you're forcing yourself into stress, you're pushing and you're working really hard, okay? So now let's, let's, let's move to the other side of that coin, okay? When they started to look at the heart and they started to look at the way the group that thought stress was good for them related to the stress, they started to notice, they noticed that their arteries actually opened wide and let a lot of blood flow into the heart. But they also got something very special. They got oxytocin pumped in the body. So if you know what oxytocin is, it's like a cuddle love drug. It's actually really good for you, it makes you feel loved. And what they theorized was that under stress, when we get oxytocin pumped in there because we're feeling good, we feel, we feel almost like this sense of love under the stress, which then opens our body up and pumps all these really good hormones and actually is healing to the heart and grows you. And that's why people who learn to love stress become really good at it. They learn to fall in love with tension and stress. That's why they grow. You know, you might be doing this with, a, with, with your weightlifting and have this killer physique because you can just love it. You identify with being a bodybuilder. You might be doing it with, with a certain business, but you're bad at relationships. And notice, I want you to notice right now where you love the stress. Could be playing basketball after work, but you hate the stress at work, right? And where you don't like the stress. And if you haven't commented, make sure to comment in the video. I wanna hear where, where's the stress work for you and where it doesn't. Now, another way the stress can play with you is that at a lower level of stress, you're comfortable. At a higher level of stress, you're bad. For my dating clients out there, whether male or female, and I wanna invite more women into this channel, it could be that when you're less attracted, you're really confident, the stress is fun. I can play with this person, I can dance and flirt, but when I get really attracted, all of a sudden I start closing off and I can feel myself shut down. You know, It could be on dates I get comfortable and have a good time, but walking up and meeting that significant other, that special someone is so challenging. You know, it's just that, that that initial approach, I can feel my whole body shut off. Now, the fear itself is not bad. If you face the fear and you're shaking, but there's a lot of courage, that can be healing to the body. But if you're facing the fear and you're doing it out of force, then that's what needs to be changed, okay? So my friend Brad, let's go back to that story. Let's end it on a good note. Brad did a lot of work. He did his great stopping period, his renunciation. He actually sat in this house right here. I moved him in here with me. Now I wouldn't do that normally, but I was becoming good friends with him. And I told him just sit for a month and just clean up all this obsessive, compulsive, reactive thinking. I gotta move, I gotta move. And he went through a, a lot of cleaning up. He did what, what are the revealing process that I teach. 
And he did a lot of cleaning up of his thinking. He did a lot of deep dive work. And he said he went through some dark stuff, you know, because I was gone for a bit of it. But he got out the other side and he started to calm down. And then I noticed he kept doing it over the next few months. And his life started to change. He started to find passion again. He started to go out every day and excited to get up. He started to get back into fitness, which was his real passion. Started to think about fitness businesses. But then he started to do something really interesting. He contacted from this new, higher, confident emotional state where he felt really good in the tension, all his former business partners. He started negotiating with them, talking to them, getting them talking. Whereas before he was yelling at them, getting mad at them. Now he was relating to them. He pulled together business deals really fast and he's currently in the process of selling one of the businesses and he's gonna get um, almost $2 million payout, a little less than $2 million payout for the business. All because he took time to stop. You see, the way you see the world radically changes when you change your internal emotional state to it. You see, there's always options out there. There's always ways to change your life, to grow, but if you hate the tension and you're stressed and you're reactive and you're heavy, you won't see the things that can help you to become the person you need to be. You won't see what you can do to make the changes you need to make to become the person you need to be. Because it just won't be, your, your mindset is not in a place to see it. All it can see is something that's gonna go wrong and so that's what it's gonna sort for. So the real key to success is getting up into courage, acceptance, love, peace, joy, gratitude, Encourage is a unique one because it helps you to look at fear and say, I feel the fear. You're real. I know you're real and I'm going to slay you. That's the difference. Below courage, it's fucking work, right? So hopefully you're enjoying this video. Hopefully you're getting value out of it. Hopefully you can see this in your life. And, um, and I want to invite you to do a couple things. If you really want to change this area of your life, consider my product or the revealing product. Uh, that I put out there. We'll, we'll put a link somewhere in here, or you can check down in the description to find out about it. It's an online course to help you process all these emotions and understand what I'm talking about. Pretty soon, I'm going to be live, launching a live online coaching course that's going to go really deep into this stuff. And if you want to go deep into this stuff, definitely uh, check that out. It's not launched yet, but it's coming very soon. And, and uh, Brad's going to be involved in that. Um, and uh, number three, I want you to consider this idea that if, if your health is at stake, consider stopping. Consider taking some time and stopping and uh, really looking at this from a different perspective, okay? Now, uh, if you haven't already, I also want you to check out my previous video where I talk about the orgasmic power of Mike Tyson and Arnold Schwarzenegger and how they used their turn on energy to fuel their passion to become the best bodybuilder and best boxer arguably in the world you know it was that turn on that made them who they are it's a really cool video um and so check that one out uh when you get a chance and you'll see that some of these same principles exist within that video now uh with that said hopefully you really enjoyed this video i've got more stories like this tons of them about people really changing their emotional relationship and skyrocketing to success including myself and I'll be sharing more of that on the channel. So make sure you've liked and subscribed and all that type of stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. And I'll be checking the comments because I'm going to be really curious what you guys say in this one. So remember, true courage leads to true happiness. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.